What's your favorite kind of story? Is it an action story filled with nonstop adrenaline? Maybe you enjoy investing in the characters of a slower paced drama. Or do you love the details and rich history of a fascinating documentary? Maybe your heart races as good triumphs over evil in the magic and wonder you find in a classic fairy tale. Come with us on a journey through these genres of storytelling as we look at the Bible and its unsung heroes. What makes a story? Now, I know what you might be thinking. That's an extremely vague question, and you're right. So maybe let's make it a little more specific. What makes a good story? What makes a story worth reading? What makes a story worth telling? What makes a story worth listening to? What makes a story memorable? Or maybe the best question we could ask ourselves is, what makes a story leave an impact on our lives? Some people might say that it's the setting, that the location a story is set in makes or breaks the story. There are these adventures that are set in the most fantastical of worlds, worlds that are created completely from scratch from an author's mind. Hogwarts, Middle Earth, Narnia. Maybe it's these worlds and those locations that you believe leaves the biggest impact on your life. Other people would say that it's the action, that what happens inside of the story is the most important to it. A professor in college I had used to say that nobody wants to hear about the day where nothing happened. It's because we all desire action. Maybe not in the form of car chases, it doesn't have to be that kind of action, but it does have to be something. Maybe you believe that a story is only good or a story only leaves an impact on you because of what happens inside of it. For me, the most important part of a story, the thing that leaves the biggest impact on my life is the characters. The people that we are supposed to relate to, the ones that we fall in love with, characters that do amazing, daring things. We look at those stories, we read about those characters and we think to ourselves, I wanna be like them. I wanna do amazing things. I want to be amazing. Well, before we get too far into this, I do wanna introduce myself. My name is Brendan Anderson and I am the student ministries pastor here at the church. And this entire month, we're gonna be telling stories, amazing stories, stories that are filled with characters that honestly do not get enough credit that they are due. And that's why this whole series is called Unsung Heroes, looking at characters in the Bible that we read about that do incredible things, but we don't get to hear enough. In this series, we're gonna be reading a fairy tale, a documentary, an action story, and a drama. And as we read these stories, which by the way, are all found within scripture, God's perfect story, we're gonna be looking at the unsung heroes found within but we're not just looking at them, okay? We're seeing what their place inside of God's larger story is. And because of that, we're gonna be answering this big question. What's my place in God's story? And today is actually a special day because it's a Sabbath Sunday. Sabbath is the biblical command to rest. And something Pastor Jeff has wanted to do is model that as a church. And so four times this year, the typical work of the church is going to stop. And we as a congregation get to collectively take a rest. And while we are going to be resting, we didn't wanna leave you without biblical teaching. And so I've brought you to Vitavu, a magical place outside of Cheyenne. And it's here where I'm gonna get to tell you a fairy tale. It's the story of a princess married to a high priest and the story of her evil mother and father. It's a story of bravery and courage, of doing the right thing and of good triumphing over evil. Well, you might be thinking, I I thought you said biblical teaching, not some fairy tale, but there's actually something really special about this fairy tale. It's the fact that it's a true story and we find it in 2 Kings chapter 11. But before we read it, we we need some context because as all my students know, context determines meaning. And the setting of this fairy tale is actually a tumultuous one. It's not one of those fairy tales that starts on the best day ever or, or in the light. The beginning of this fairy tale is actually very dark it can feel almost hopeless and filled with despair. You see, the Israelites are divided amongst two kingdoms, Judah in the south and Israel in the north. And at this time, Israel's king, Jehu, 
has just finished fulfilling a prophecy given by the prophet Elijah that the line of the godless King Ahab of Judah would be completely wiped out. And it's in chapter 10 of 2 Kings that we read how he went about doing this. But Ahaziah's sister, Jehoshaphat, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Ahaziah's infant son, Joash, and stole him away from among the rest of the king's children who were about to be killed. She put Joash and his nurse in a bedroom and they hid him from Athaliah, so the child was not murdered. Joash remained hidden in the temple of the Lord for six years while Athaliah ruled over the land. I mean, tell me that this doesn't sound like a fairy tale. An evil queen, a royal line about to be destroyed, but there is a courageous heroine, this princess, who is obedient to God, who is submitting to his will and surrendering herself. I mean, God must have orchestrated all of this perfectly to work out exactly as he needed. Jehoshaphat, she steals the prince away before he can be killed, this this baby. And not just any baby, but this baby would grow up to be the great, 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 I imagine I kept doing this, great grandfather of Jesus. It's because of Jehoshaphat that the prophecy of the Messiah coming from the line of David remains intact. It's because of this heroine that we get to continue reading about this beautiful story that God has written for us. You see, through her bravery and courage, Jehoshaphat stood up to evil. She saw corruption in front of her and could not stand idly by as it happened. This woman was able to save the rightful king. In the seventh year of Athaliah's reign, Jehoiada the priest summoned the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, and the palace guards to come to the temple of the Lord. He made a solemn pact with them and made them swear an oath of loyalty there in the Lord's temple. Then he showed them the king's son. We're not gonna read all of this chapter, but basically Jehoiada, the priest, which by the way, is also Jehoshaphat's husband. And this is the only time in scripture where a princess is married to a priest. So again, tell me that this is not a fairy tale, but basically Jehoiada, he summons the king's guards and he brings them to the temple to show him Joash. And it's there that they begin to protect him so that they can now face down the evil queen. Then Jehoiada brought out Joash, the king's son, placed the crown on his head and presented him with a copy of God's laws. They anointed him and proclaimed him king and everyone clapped their hands and shouted, long live the king. When Athaliah heard the noise made by the palace guards and the people, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the pillar, as was the custom at times of coronation. The commanders and trumpeters were surrounding him and people from all over the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. When Athaliah saw all of this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, treason, treason. Then Jehoiada, the priest, ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, take her to the soldiers in front of the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. For the priest has said, she must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her out to the gate where horses enter the palace grounds and she was killed there. Then Jehoiada made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. He also made a covenant between the king and the people and all the people of the land went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols to pieces and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal in front of the altars. Jehoiada, the priest stationed guards at the temple of the Lord. Then the commanders, the Karite mercenaries, the palace guards, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. They went through the gate of the guards and into the palace, and the king took his seat on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful because Athaliah had been killed at the king's palace. So because of his aunt Jehoshaphat, a woman who is all but forgotten by the rest of scripture, I mean, a woman who literally appears in one verse, and yet a woman who shows us bravery, compassion, justice, and strength. She shows us that God's promises in our lives can be trusted, but because of her place in God's story, a story that he writes in conjunction with us, his people, this is what we get to read. Verse 21 says, Joash was seven years old when he became king. The end. 
Well, no, it's not actually the end. You see, Joash reigned in Judah for 40 years. And scripture tells us that he did what was right in the Lord's eyes. And because of that, through him, we get to have Jesus. It's a beautiful story, but I think a lot of us glaze over it in scripture. I mean, if I took a poll of the room, I would say that the vast majority of people would not even recognize Jehoshaphat's name, let alone what she did in light of the whole of scripture. And yet she's this incredible example of a woman, one who is willing to put herself in danger just to be obedient to God's will. I mean, she's submitting herself to him and surrendering everything she has just to be a part of his story. And yet still she goes unsung, forgotten this heroine, and yet she knew what her place was. So remember our big question, what's my place in God's story? And the answer is, I don't know. I don't know what your place is. And in the same way, you might not know what mine is, but I do know the only way for us to figure it out is is through these three ways, through obedience, through submission, and through surrender. The truth is I relate to Jehoshaphat. Maybe you do too. You see, not all of us are going to be a Moses. We're not going to lead vast groups of people through the wilderness or just in life in general. Not all of us are gonna be Jonah. We're not gonna be Peter or Paul or John, and that's okay. Because we all have this special, unique place inside of God's masterpiece. Even if, like Jehoshaphat, it's only one verse. We all have a calling to reach people for God. And you might not, li- you might not be like Peter, preaching and baptizing 3,000 people, but maybe you're like Jehoshaphat, saving a single soul. The only way we can truly live inside of God's masterpiece, though, is if we're obedient to him, shown through submission to his word and surrendering ourselves completely to him. When we do these things, just like Jehoshaphat, I believe that God uses us exactly where we are to be a part of his story in in reaching his people, advancing his kingdom. Listen, the fairy tale is just the beginning. The magic of being a Christian never ends. And I can't wait to continue reading stories with you guys all month long. I love you guys. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, we thank you so much God, that you would choose to write your stories with us. God, that that you choose for us to be a part of them and that it, it doesn't take anything special for us to do amazing things for you. God, I pray that that when situations arise, when we see things in front of us, that we would remember to do the three things or to be obedient to you, to submit ourselves to you, to surrender ourselves completely to you. God, would you help us be a part of your story and do amazing things in your name. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Hey, I love you guys. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your story today. I'll see you guys next week.